you are developing a new web application or let's say uh, a REST API and it comes the moment where you need to think about who is going to access your application at what level how your application is going to recognize those users in a sequence of three videos i'm going to demonstrate how you can use an off-the-shelf identity management product and integrate it with your new software and there are benefits of doing that one is the development time is going to be shorter but also an important one is that if you think about authentication and authorization and security in, in general, there are many details that shouldn't be taken for granted. And when you use specialized software to handle that, you're likely going to have a, a stronger solution in the end. The product that I'm going to use is Keycloak. With Keycloak, you can register users, you can authenticate them, you can define roles, you can create groups, etc. Keycloak is open source. Um, you don't have to pay anything to use it. It had its first release in 2014. It's a project that is well maintained. It's currently supported by Red Hat and it's used by many applications. And it's worth mentioning other products because in this product class, there are many alternatives. Uh, we can see Alt0, uh, which is a commercial product, but they have a good free tier. Um, there is Microsoft with Azure Active Directory. Uh, there is this one called Authentic, uh, written in Python. And a new one that came up recently and looks very promising. Uh, Citadel. One thing I like about Keycloak is that it allows you to self-host it. So if you don't want your data to stay with an external party, you can self-host it and you can have everything on premises. It's easy to start Keycloak with a Docker container. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that part, how I'm using Keycloak with Docker in my local development environments. I'm going to show you now my Docker file. Um, the first service that I have here is MariaDB, which is the storage for Keycloak. Here I'm defining the collation of the server, uh, the root passwords, and I have two volumes. One is the normal MySQL data volume, and the other one is um, an entry point for SQL initialization scripts that I can use to create anything like seed data or create the databases, etc. The second service that I have is completely optional, uh, PHP My Admin, but it helps to visualize and manage the, the data on MariaDB. Here it's just pointing to MariaDB host, uh, what is the port, etc. Um, and I'm exposing that because it's a web application that listens on port 80. Um, I'm exposing that to my local port 8180. And the third service that I have here is a bit of a, a trick because what I want to achieve is that uh, my SQL is completely um, started and ready to accept requests before Keycloak starts up. And the way I found to do that is by using this Docker image and it will effectively block and it will keep checking and asking this host on these ports to see if it's available. And as soon as, as it's available, it's going to unblock and let the next service uh, start up. If I only use this depends on, it doesn't really work because um, the MariaDB server container is started, um, but there is a period of time where it's not yet ready to accept requests. If in that time, Keycloak tries to execute its initialization and migration scripts, etc., it's, it's going to fail. So that's why I put this extra image here to manage and to, let's say, synchronize that uh, startup. Finally, um, the last service that I have here is Keycloak uh, itself. I'm exposing the web interface here in port 8181. This is the command to start it for development time. Production is a little bit different. Uh, the username and password of the admin user, uh, the storage that it uses, and the authentication to the storage. So this is what Keycloak is going to use to communicate with the database. And all of those services are running on the same network that is defined here. 
And because I have this start dependency service to synchronize the startup, I have to run my Docker file in two separate steps. And for that, I put together a small shell script. In the first command, it's going to point at that start dependency service with the RM. So when that is completed, it can be removed. Uh, but if we look in the depends on, we can see that it depends on PHP my admin, which in turn depends on the database. So the order of the startup is going to be first this one, second this one, and finally the check uh, if the database is available. It's going to keep checking. And as soon as the database is available, it will unblock and allow the second command of the script to execute. And that is pointed to keycloak service, which is the main or, or the last one in the Docker file. I'm going to run it now um, just to show you I have here Docker desktop. I don't have any containers running and I don't have any volume. Now I'm going to execute my script. You can see the volume was created and it's creating the containers, um, waiting for the database, starts in Keycloak. The first time it runs, it takes a while because it has to execute all the migrations, etc. Yeah, um, if we see this message in the end, running the server in develop mode, do not use this configuration in production. That means it's already accessible. But we can have a look now at Docker desktop. We have the database here, PHP, MyAdmin, Keycloak, the data volume. And if I go to my browser and go to localhost 8181, I can see the web interface of Keycloak. If I try to log in, I can type here admin, admin123. That came from what I define here. And I can log in. Um, this drop down shows my realms. The first thing I want to do is create the realm of my application. So I can click that blue button and type my demo, the, the name of my realm. I can see it created now. And just to say that a realm um, is a space in Keycloak where you can have users, applications, roles, groups. Um, realms are isolated from one another. A realm will authenticate a user that belongs to that realm. It's a way to have multiple tenants, let's say, or multiple applications that are separate, but in the same Keycloak instance. When we install Keycloak, um, we have automatically the master realm. The first step usually is to create at least one realm for our application. The next thing I'll need to do here is to create a client. If I show you the diagram of my demo application, you can see that I have Keycloak here, a backend API, and the front end will be in Next.js. For this backend uh, API to be able to create users and assign users to a role or reset a user's password, it's going to use the REST API that is provided by Keycloak. And for us to use that REST API, we need to have a client. So I can go here, create clients. I can give it a, a name like that, demo backend, because it's going to represent this part here. Um, and because this is a server to server authentication, all I need to have here is client authentication switched on because I will need to authenticate the clients and I don't need those, but I need the service account roles. I can leave that part as it is and click save. So now I have my clients. I can go to this tab service account roles. And I want to give a role to that client. Otherwise, if I don't give the role, it's not going to have permissions to manage users and other things in Keycloak. So I can go here, filter by client. I can type realm. And I'm going to give the client this role, realm admin. So it has all the privileges that are necessary to manage uh, users and other things in the Keycloak realm. I click assign. I can now see that I have a client 
demo backend with um, the role required to manage users. The next thing I'm going to do here is create two roles in my realm to represent um, two categories of users. One category that can view the data and another category that can manage the data. So the first role, I'm going to call it viewer. So that is created. And the second one, add me. And now I have the two roles here. Okay, we made a few changes. First, we created our realm. Then we created our client. We gave the service account role to the clients. And then we created two realm roles. What I want to show next is how we can export all of that configuration into a JSON file so that if we need to recreate the container, we can import the configuration back and have everything working without requiring manual intervention. So to show the export process, I'm going to open now again Docker Desktop and I'm going to click the Keycloak running container. At the top, I have the terminal tab. If I go there, I'm logged in to the Keycloak container. I have to go to the folder where the Keycloak binaries are, which is this one. And inside of that folder, I have the command line utility kc.sh. And to export the configuration, I have to do kc.sh um, export and I give a file. I'm going to put that on the temp folder and call it keycloak.json. So that will export my configuration. If I go to that folder and view the contents of the file, it looks like this. Okay. If you don't have Docker Desktop installed, you can do the same thing using your terminal. First, you identify what is your, your container ID, and then you can do Docker, execute, interactive with a terminal and then you can put the container id there or the first parts of it and then you can do bin and bash and that is going to give you the terminal and you can do the same thing here so you cloak and bin and it's gonna be here now I want to copy the file from the container and into my host's file system. For that, I can use um, the docker cp command identifying the container and the source file, which is the location and the destination. So it copy the file. I can just go there and view. Now I want to go back to my Docker Compose file to show two changes we need to do here in order to be able to import the keycloak.json file. The first one is a volume. In this volume, we're going to map from the local keycloak folder where the file is to the container opt keycloak data imports, which is the folder where keycloak is going to look uh, to import the data. And the other change is going to be a new argument here where we are starting keycloak. And we're going to say that we need to import the realm. What I want to show now is that I deleted everything that we had in terms of containers and volumes. It's all empty. I'm going to run my Docker Compose again to recreate it. And my expectation is that the configuration from the JSON file is imported back automatically into Keycloak. Okay, it's done. If I go to my browser and refresh, it's going to ask me to log in again. And I can see here that I have my realm. And in the client, I have the one that I had created. And I also have the roles. Uh, one last thing that I forgot to mention. I'm going to go back to my Docker file. Uh, this is my database and we have one of the volumes is mapping from my local SQL folder into this Docker entry point where we can initialize a database. So if I go there to my SQL folder, I just want to show the contents of that. It's in there that I'm creating the Keycloak database and the user that has permissions to access the database with these passwords. So that's where it comes from, this 
keycloak user and this password. It's when I initialize the database that I create it. That is what I had for this first part of the demo. I wanted to show a little bit about Keycloak and Docker and how to manage configuration, export, import. In the next part, I'm going to show the backend application in Golang and how it communicates with Keycloak via the REST API to register users, authenticate, and how we can protect the roots. Let me know what you think. Um, if you know of better ways to do this, I'm happy to learn more about. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.